43 years ago, I was at lunch at my church. The speaker was Herb Ellingwood, who was then the, the legal affairs secretary for Governor Reagan and our church in California. I couldn't wait. I, I was assigned the seat beside the head table, and I, I wanted to hear all about Reagan. Do they really pray in Reagan's office and all this? For an hour straight, um, he never mentioned Reagan. He was the happiest Christian I've <laughs> ever met in my life. And he just told me one story after another about how he was sharing at God's opening doors and share his faith and in stores and retailers and restaurants and airplanes and whatever. And I walked away from that encounter saying, I want what he has. It's so scriptural. I want, yeah, yeah, I, I've been good. in the church all my life. I, I tried to earn my way into heaven by doing everything I could in the church. I've tried to give my way into heaven. I believe that some send, some go. And I can just work and give money and that'll make it, I get the same brownie points, but I was dry. Mm. I hungered for that kind of joy. And had this guy, I saw it. I said, I want that for myself. And so I started sharing my faith uh, poorly, nervously, you know, doing all things wrong, but bearing fruit for three years to where I got easier and easier. Five into three years, I thought he was leading me into full-time ministry. In the most fervent prayer I ever prayed in my life, I prayed and said, God, if you want me to go into full-time ministry, I will. But if I do, our little struggling cottage family business at that moment in time would have failed because I was the third generation leader. So I said, God, this is a very serious decision for me. So mm. you're almost going to have to tell me with an audible voice. Not 20 minutes later, a gentleman walked in my office that I didn't know personally, but I knew him from the church. He was on the platform a couple of times speaking. I knew he was a missionary kid, my same age, but grew up in the mission field. He walked in all happy. Hey, Barry, how's it going? I thought, well, he's probably not into cool cars and shiny paint finishes. <laughs> so uh, and so I just started telling different encounters. I have people, I was praying for you. And he says, he looked at me, he says, God's given you a wonderful ministry here, hasn't he? And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, the people you're reaching, a pastor would never reach. As a businessman, you can. Mm. And then he gave me this heavy statement. He says, it's obvious that your business is your pulpit. That wow. was 40 years ago. That's strong. I said, I can't believe it. I just prayed this prayer asking God what I should do. He says, well, that explains it. I said, well, what, do you, what explains what? What do you mean? He said, I was driving up Red Hill, which was the closest main street to our office. He said, I just dropped some missionaries off at Orange County Airport. We're in Irvine, California. He says, and God spoke to me and said, go see Barry McGuire. And I argued with him all the way to your parking lot saying, I don't know his business. I am like a fool out of myself, you know. And he said, when I came into your office, I didn't know what to say, but how's it going? And that confirmed it. And that was 40 years ago this year. Wow. And so I've seen That's... my business, my pulpit ever since. He's enlarged my territory and give me more influence. Not about car wax. I love cars. I'm a car guy. I love my <laughs> business. But I love, most importantly, leading people to Jesus Christ. And I do it every moment of every day. It's on my mind, intentional. And if we all do that and love on people, instead of condemning them, but loving on Jesus says, they'll know you're my disciple by your love. If you love on people, all of a sudden they say, whoa, what's, what's that all about? And they start wanting what we have. And we need to start mm -hmm. doing that as a body of Christ.